Go. Several years ago, a long time ago, I took an air crash investigation course. And one of the things that we did in that class was to go to an aircraft salvage yard. In the salvage yard, we started to analyze the patterns of wreckage. And it's interesting, I learned, that you can tell to a large extent of the type of maneuver an airplane was in when it hit the ground based on the pattern of wreckage. If an airplane is in a spin and it impacts the ground, the inertia of the rotation causes the tail to bend outward on impact. So the leading, the, the wing that hits first will bend forward because it's rotating like this, the tail will bend in the opposite direction. And so you know that that airplane was in a spin when it hit it. If the airplane is in a spiral, the leading edge of the uh, inside wing will impact first. And because the airplane's in this maneuver, the inertia of impact will cause the tail to fold toward the wing. So if the tail of the airplane in the wreckage is folded away from the wing that hit first, it was spinning. If it's folded toward the wing, it was spiraling. Interestingly, in the salvage yard, we found many more indications of a spiral impact than we did spins. So it's possible that spirals are a much larger uh, percentage of what we might traditionally call stall spin accidents. If you missed an approach, you may have to level off and enter a holding pattern. And it can be real challenging in this high workload environment to level off, accelerate into level flight, then to have to slow down again into the holding pattern. So there's a technique I use that helps reduce the workload in this high workload environment. And what we really want to do is simply level off into holding configuration and maintaining a constant airspeed. So we're climbing out at, at uh, best climb, it's, it's uh, at the cruise climb speed, about 110 knots. Approximately two or 300 feet before reaching our level off altitude, I'll extend the approach flaps. Now we're extending the approach flaps here for two reasons. One, there will be a little bit of a pitch change, and so it helps you ride that out before you hit the level off. And secondly, more importantly, it provides just enough drag to resist the acceleration of the airplane as you level off. So when you level off at the holding altitude, you don't speed up to 150 knots, only to have to slow it back down and fight that trim battle as you're entering a hole. So a couple of hundred feet before level, level off, extend the approach flaps, the airplane continues to climb to your altitude. As you reach altitude, reduce your throttle back to about your 18 inch manifold pressure target. And the airplane will very nicely settle into level flight in that approach configuration about 110 knots without any change in the trim at all. I use the same technique when I'm flying in a closed traffic pattern. I take off, I enter climb when I'm ready to level off on downwind. I'll lead it with a little flap extension and then as I reach my altitude, reduce my throttle back to uh, pattern speed. Now I'm at pattern setting, and now I'm at pattern speed, trimmed up for level flight on the downwind. Once you've exhausted your attempts at restarting the engine and nothing has worked, you need to get the maximum glide performance, and so you need to commit to the full glide configuration. To do that, you pull the propeller control to the low RPM position, all of the way out or back. When you do that, you'll feel a significant amount of acceleration pushing you back into your seat because of the reduction of drag. Because the airplane accelerates, its total drag increases, so you have to pitch the nose up to maintain best glide speed to get the best performance. And you'll find that it takes about a flat level, almost zero on the horizon attitude to maintain best glide speed with the propeller in the low RPM position. And your rate of descent, instead of being 15 to 1700 foot per minute, is somewhere in the five to 700 foot per minute range, maybe as much as 900 uh, foot per minute in some of the heavier airplanes. But, but glide performance improves by one third to one half when you pull the propeller to the low RPM position. So it's important to remember that when you need to make a maximum performance glide.
engaging autopilot. 